You're Circuit Judge Tobin, the hanging judge. You've been mighty fond of making tough speeches to the poor devils who have to swing because you say so. But now the rope's going around your own neck, Judge Tobin. You've been tried and convicted of horse stealing. Well, we're going to give you time to say your prayers. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Don't waste time looking for Wyatt Herb. He wouldn't lift a finger to save it. Put the rope on. and legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Most of the judges with whom Marshall Earp had to deal were honest, strong, and fair-minded men. But when Judge Tobin was assigned to ride a circuit which included Dodge City, Wyatt came up against a strange character. Tobin had set out to make a reputation for himself as a hanging judge. Men called him Rope Tobin and compared him with the notorious Judge Parker, who hanged 88 men in Oklahoma Territory. But in the case of Judge Tobin... The defendant will face the court. Mr. Bingham, you've been tried and found guilty of stealing a horse. You stole this animal from a traveler on the open prairie. You were well aware that a man's horse is his life. Cattle and buffalo will stampede at sight of a man on foot. Men have been trampled to death in such stampedes. Furthermore, a man without a horse has no means of escape from savage renegade Indians. By your act, you condemned your victim to death. And only by the merest chance... I didn't steal that horse. I bought him. Silence. Marshal Earp, it's the judgment of this court that Mr. Bingham be hanged by the neck until dead. You will notify Sheriff Bassett that the execution will take place tomorrow any time between sunrise and sunset. And may the Lord have mercy on his soul. Remove the prisoner. Something on your mind, Mr. Earp? Yes, sir, there is. Well, out with it. Well, since you asked me, Your Honor, I think that Mr. Bingham might be telling the truth. What makes you think so? Well, I know he was riding the horse when we arrested him, and he didn't have a bill of sale, and we couldn't find the man that he said sold the horse to him, but... Well, it seems to me... He that... had a fair trial, Mr. Earp. Had he been caught on the trail riding a stolen horse, he'd have been hanged from the nearest tree. Do you believe in lynch law, Mr. Earp? No, sir, I don't. I hate it. Well, so do I. And the only way to put down lynch law on this frontier is for legally constituted courts to do their duty. We must teach men to respect legal justice. Do you have any further comments, Marshal? Yes, Judge Tobin, with your permission, I have. But it involves criticism of this court. So maybe I better keep my mouth shut. Speak up. Speak up. Well, sir, with all respect, I don't believe in hanging a man on circumstantial evidence as in this case. You say you want the law respected. Well, that's what I want, too. But do you believe hanging a man on circumstantial evidence is the way to go about it? I disagree with your thinking. Well, you're the judge. Careful now. Well, anyway, it's not my jurisdiction. Crime was committed in Ford County, so it's up to Sheriff Bassett. <laughs> you do know a little about the law. Just enough to serve you fair notice, Judge. I don't believe in hanging for any other reason than first-degree murder. And only then on most conclusive evidence. Fair notice? Of what? Dodge City is in Ford County, and I'm not Sheriff Bassett. Good day, Your Honor. Did you tell him what for? As much as I dared, no sense in getting fined for contempt of court. What's wrong with that man, Wyatt? He's never seen a hanging, that's what's wrong with him. Any kind of circumstantial evidence satisfies him. No, he's a real hanging judge for sure. Well, Charlie Bassett says Bingham's wanted in Nebraska for two murders. I guess it all evens up. No, it doesn't. The judge should send him back to Nebraska for trial. Oh, now, Wyatt. Look, how would you like a friend of yours hanged on doubtful evidence? Well, now, I can't think of any of my friends who were after to get hanged. There's nothing funny about this, you know. You send that poor fellow on over to 
Sheriff Bassett's lockup, then wash your hands. Well, I just washed them. Wonder what kind of soap Judge Tobin uses on his. Huh? Well, never mind, go on. Three to win up. Six to lose up. Eight to win up. I want to take a look at that deal box. Hand that back. I got a hunch this is a Mississippi bottom deal. I said hand that back. Why, you little jerk. Finley, put it away. He grabbed my deal box. Ease off. Take a walk. Take over, Earl. Chief, you and I would better have a little talk. In there. It'll be a pleasure. Well, what's your complaint? The card game's crooked. It's been crooked ever since Chalk Beeson left for KC. And I'm going to prove it to Chalk when he gets back with this. Well, let me see. Perhaps Finley has... Not him, you. Chalk left you here to run things. And Finley will deal him straight or crooked, just as you say. How much did you lose? Thousand. You never had that much. One thousand. It'll cost you a lot more if I tell Beeson. He'll make you pony up five times that. And put a yellow tag on you besides. All right, all right. But I can't get it for you right now. When? Tonight. The cashiers change shift at eight o'clock. Now, you slip in the back way. I'll give you the money. You give me the box. Uh, of course, Pete. When I get the money, you'll get this. Where's your relief man, Finley? He's late. I'll sit in for you. Thanks, Pete. Anything wrong? Chief Morgan's still mad. Take the alley home. All right, boys. Let's change the deal box. Nothing like new cards and a fresh box. Break open the deck. I'll take a stay, Pete. Sure. I'll we'll keep cash for you. Good. Morgan. I think he's dead. Morgan? Morgan. Is he he's shot? dead. All right, you men stay out here. Break it up. Dead. You men go on back in the saloon. Go on. Morgan was a good guy, too. That hole in Morgan came from a 41 Derringer. You know anybody that owns one? Five spot Finley. He used to have one. Where's Finley? He went off shift about 8 o'clock. He's probably at home. Go pick him up. Finley wouldn't shoot anybody wide. I knew him in Abilene. In fact, he tipped me off to a gunslinger that was... Look, empty. will you just go pick him up? Whatever you say. You quit wasting my time. I took this off of Morgan. You ever see it before? No, sir. You're lying. It's a Mississippi bottom dealer. Now, you want to explain how come Morgan had it? Marshal, I swear to you, I don't know anything about it. Look, three eyewitnesses out there told me they saw Morgan take it off Finley at the faro table. They also saw Finley pull a Derringer on Morgan. Marshal, Finley's my friend. Now, surely you don't expect me to incriminate him. Finley heard about the shooting. I met him in the alley. I don't think I had anything to do with it. You own a Derringer, Mr. Finley? Yes, sir. Hmm. Where is it? It's in the drawer in the faro table. And it's here to tell you what... Never mind. Let's go see it. Come on. Gone, Mr. Earp. Somebody stole it. Pete, you know the gun was in the drawer when you took the slot from me. Don't you remember? You said Morgan was sore at me for me to take the alley home. Finley, Mr. Earp knows about the box. He does?
I cheated Morgan, but I didn't kill him. You know me, Bat. I wouldn't kill anybody. I told as much to Marshal Earp. You threatened Morgan with a gun, didn't you? Yes, sir, but only to keep him from beating me up. Anders took the Derringer and put it in the drawer. Then Jake grabbed me and hustled me out. Ain't that right? Finley, you're talking too much. You need a lawyer. Lawyer? Mr. Finley, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. Why, it? So Rob Tobin can do the now same thing? Now you're the one that's talking too much, Mr. Masterson. Take him to jail. Come on. Mr. Earp. Uh, howdy, Mr. Craig. Terrible thing Finley done. You reckon Judge Tobin will hang him along with Bingham? Oh, easy, Mr. Craig. Yeah. Are you looking for clues? No, haven't found the murder weapon yet. It's a 41 Derringer. Finley wouldn't hide it around here this close. He knows I'm always filling and emptying this barrel. No, it's not in there. You keep your eye peeled out for a Derringer, huh? Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Mr. Earp. Well, Judge Tobin. Benton here has been pestering me to grant bail to some gambler name of Finley. What do you know about the case? Well, sir, Eve Morgan, a cowhand, was shot to death in an alley behind the Long Branch Saloon. He and Finley had an argument about a crooked deal box this afternoon. I arrested Finley on suspicion of murder. Suspicion? My client denies the charge, Your Honor. There's nothing but circumstances. That will be all, sir. It's a clear case of first-degree murder, isn't it? No, Your Honor, it isn't. Can't you present a clear-cut case about anything? Finley claims somebody stole his gun. There were a lot of people in position to do that, sir. Also, I haven't checked into the crooked gambling angle, and I... Nonsense! First-degree murder, no bail. I'll hear this case at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Have the defendant in court at that time. 10 o'clock? And I won't consider any motion for a delay or continuance, Mr. Benton. Crooked gambler. Murders a man in cold blood. We'll see. We'll see. Finley wants to talk to you, Mr. Benton. Well, I'll do the best I can. Now, wait a minute. You know, Judge Torben can't force you to trial. Not without reasonable time to prepare a defense, anyway. They call him rope, Torben, Mr. Earp. Stalling would only make his temper worse. You sentence Finley to hang. He's already made up his mind. Well, then... If it comes to that, we can ask for a stay of execution pending appeal. But you'd better find out who did kill Morgan, and right quick. Now, how do you feel? And I'd like to put a rope around Tobin's neck. Hey, that may not be a bad idea. Huh? Judge Tobin has a lot of knowledge about law. But he's never had his nose far enough away from a law book to know anything about people. Has Finley got any good friends besides you? A dozen good ones, at least. Well, six ought to be enough. You and I can't do anything, but his friends might be able to teach Judge Tobin about circumstantial evidence. Save Finley. You mean frame the judge? Why, Mr. Masters, such talk from an officer of the law. And the boys who like Finley aren't officers of the law. Well, let's see what happens in court. Yeah. Have you reached a verdict? Guilty, Your Honor. Guilty of what? Oh, well, murder in the first degree. Well, oh, order! That's how you instructed us to vote, ain't it? Oh, order! Considering the evidence, there was no other verdict possible. You gentlemen have done your duty, and the court commends you. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant will rise. Mr. Finley, you are a card sharp and a crook. When the deceased caught you cheating, he took your deal box as evidence. Testimony indicates that Mr. Morgan intended to complain to the owner of the Long Branch Saloon. To prevent this, you waylaid him in an alley, and with malice aforethought, you shot him in the back. No, sir. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. Silence! The court would like to show mercy, but your crime does not deserve mercy. I sentence you to be hanged by the neck until dead. Your Honor, 
ask, Mr. Bell. I must ask for a stay of execution pending appeal. That is your privilege, Miss Counsel for the Condemned. Any comment, Mr. Earp? No, sir. Don't you worry, Finley boy. We're with you. You will take your seat until court's adjourned. Marshal Earp? Yes, sir. I have business in Abilene. Other cases on the docket will be postponed till my return. Remove the condemned. Court is adjourned. Bring him in. Get him out of there, boy. Hustle it up. Hello, oh, Bat. They look pretty much alike, don't they? Yeah, I couldn't tell them apart. Nice work, Jim. Even to the brands and scars. He bar in on the judge's horse, bar each in my horse. Of course, I had to block out the white stocking on my horse. Select. Where's old man Ruger? Well, we left him sleeping in hay bed. We gotta move on. I'll hide the judge's horse. And don't forget, you've gotta stop Tobin before he crosses the city limits. Oh, we'll stop him. Bat. Why don't we really hang the old bus? No, just put a rope around his neck. Why now I'll be right behind you. Don't you even rough him up. Remember, he's a circuit judge. We're going to be over careful. How you coming, boys? All right. Get over here. <laughs> Not so fast, stranger. No. Not so fast, stranger. That's my horse you're making off with. Are you men drunk or is this some kind of a practical joke? It ain't funny. We hang horse thieves. Light down. Nonsense. These are my horses. That one ain't. Light down. Come on. Do you know who I am? No, and I don't care. You're stealing my horse. Nonsense. Both these horses are Bar N brand. I bought them from Colonel French at the Bar N Ranch. You've heard of him? Bar? Bar H? No. That brand's been tampered with. This is a frame up. You steal my horse, then accuse me of framing you. Rope's ready, Jim. Let's get it over with. Let go of me. Let go of me, I say. Let go of me. I'm Circuit Judge Tobin. No. Not Rope Tobin. The hanging judge? Well, boys, ain't that something? Rope Tobin turns horse thief. That tree over yonder looks right handy. You won't get away with this. Oh, hanging a man ain't too difficult. Now tie his hands? No, it's more fun when they got their hands free and try to fight the rope. Come on, we're wasting time. Hey! Well, what goes on here? Caught a horse thief, Marshal. Well, that's Judge Tobin. He wouldn't steal a horse. He did, though. That left-hand bay, my horse, got my Bar H brand. This is a frame-up. Maybe the livery stable man gave me the wrong horse by mistake. Uh, go check the brand. Well, we don't hang horse thieves without some show of a trial. What about Finley and Bingham? They had a trial. Left one's Bar H, the other's Bar N. Well, I'm sorry, Judge, but I can't help myself. You're under arrest. Charge a horse stealer. Take that rope off him. Climb in your buggy and we'll head back to town. Go on. Ghastly mistake. Now, those hoodlums might have tried to hang me. And on the flimsiest of circumstantial evidence. What if this got into the newspapers an accusation like this? Rumor, gossip, the dignity of my office. Marshal Earp, I demand an immediate release. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but any charge by a citizen must be investigated. Oh, come now, we've had our differences, but surely you don't believe that I stole that horse. No, sir, I don't. Well, then why are you holding me on a charge that you admit's absurd? Blackmail. What? I have here an official police report. With a felony complaint signed by Jim Lawrence, the owner of the stolen horse. Just what are you after? Well, Judge, to begin with, I'm looking for a human being in you. What is this? Then there's the blackmail. But let's call it white blackmail, shall we? I want a stay of execution for Mr. Bingham. He should be sent back to Nebraska and tried there for murder. Is he wanted there? That's right, on two counts. And Sheriff Bassett didn't mention anything about it because he felt Bingham might just as well be hanged here as in Nebraska. Well, I don't agree with Charlie's idea of the law. I also don't agree with hanging men on flimsy circumstantial evidence. It'll ruin respect for law out here. 
And you and I, sir, in our different ways, are the law here, aren't we? Those Nebraska charges should have had priority. All right, I'll grant the stay, but not as a price for anything. Now, go ahead and do your duty as you see it. One other thing, sir. I ask you to release Finley on bail. A condemned murderer? Look, sir, I need your help. I think I know the man who really murdered Morgan. Now, if you turn Finley loose, the man I'm after will get scared, and a scared man always makes a wrong move. It's still blackmail. No, sir, it isn't. I changed my mind. There won't be any police report, and I'll ask Jim Lawrence to withdraw his complaint. What would make a stubborn, opinionated man like yourself change his mind? My father's a judge back in Illinois. The kind of judge all of you should be. He didn't get his reputation by hanging men and circumstantial evidence. I guess I uh, tried to mold Judge Tobin in his image. I'm sorry for that. Excuse me, Judge. Wyatt, they're talking mighty mean at the Long Branch. They think Finley had a raw deal. I expected that. All right, round up the rest of the deputies. Tell them to load with buckshot. No, no! I'll admit Finley to bail. Turn him loose. Thank you, sir. But if you've got another suspect, you better get him quick. I can always change my mind. Finley! Finley! Such a good to see you. Finley, you're free. I'm only out on bail, but, but I sure thank you guys. Still winning, huh? Yeah, little old Finley. Boy, howdy. Good to see you. Sure want to thank you, Pete, for getting me the lawyer and everything. Ah, what's a friend for? Boys, the next round's on the house. How come old Rope Tobin let you out on bail? Well, Mr. Earp says it's because they can't find my gun. How does that figure? It's a kind of a legal technicality. Mr. Erb suggested it to the judge, and the judge agreed. Unless they find my gun, they can't hang me. Sure hope they never find me. <laughs> sure. You ain't buying a drink, Speed. I am. Come on. Drinks are on me. All this can happen. Come on, boy. Get your money. Howdy, Marshal. Bad. Howdy, Mr. Anders. We're still looking for that Derringer. Yeah, Finley was telling me about that. Marshal, why does old Judge Tobin want to hang little old Finley? Why, Morgan never was no good. Neither are you. Big gun, big talk. You scared Finley into cheating. He's off. You move aside, I'd like to take a look in there. Why, there's, there's nothing in there except a lot of trash. What are you so nervous about? Nothing, Marshal. Nothing at all. Well, what do you know? Finley must have stashed that in there. I'm, I mean, whoever shot Morgan must have put it in there. No, you stole it and shot Morgan. Are you crazy? Last night, right after the shooting, I came out here and that barrel was empty. So what does that prove? You knew I looked in there. You figure the safest place to hide this is where I'd already looked. An old man Craig threw some trash in there, and you came out and threw the Derringer on top of it. You're under arrest, Mr. Aaron. Yeah? Stand steady. My friend. You're trying to get me home. Have I stolen any more horses? No, sir, I... Uh... On your horse hidden in the livery stable. In the salva murder case with the dying man's confession, you even find my horse. That's sheer genius, Marshal Herb. Uh, your Honor, what is the penalty for framing a circuit judge on a horse theft charge? Well, I wouldn't hang the man who did it, but you can warn him any more shenanigans will draw a mighty stiff prison sentence. Oh. Well, I'll, uh, 
I'll tell him that when I see him. Get in. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. 